Father, we thank you for this message. Uh, last week, Lord, you um, were priming our pumps as we embark on this tabernacle teaching. This week, you're finishing with the priming, Father God, and we're going to launch out into uh, the, the actual tabernacle teaching. Uh, so hopefully next week, Father God, there will be no more priming and we'll be up to the level where we should be so that we can uh, receive your word, so that we can minister your word, so that our relationships with you become tighter, that we draw closer to you and nearer to you as you draw near to us, Father God. We thank you and give you honor and praises. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, can someone give me some, some water, please? Uh, all right. Well, you see, if you, everybody, everybody still had a paper? Hmm? Everybody still got their outline from last week? A text, however y'all need it. Who don't have it? You got a phone? You don't have a phone yet? You you don't have it? You got what you got? You got your phone on you? All right. I, yeah, we can send it to you right now. You don't have your phone? How about down that eight day? You don't have a phone, you got to get the Bible and work the Bible. You got to get that old fashioned thing. This right here, the best thing going. I watched I watched Papa giving out some uh, Bibles last week in Houston. They're giving the people Bibles. You know, especially now, um, people are gonna start to come to church, and they're not they're not gonna bring a Bible because you know why? They don't know the word. I don't know too many people who really carry around the Bible sincerely, sincerely carry it around and don't know the word. Most people who are bring one of them, people who don't know the word are walking here with one of them table Bibles <laughs> with the dust still on it that they took off their grandma table. And you say turn to Genesis, they lost. They don't know where to go. They don't know what to do. But, hey, but we welcome you. Come on down here. We help you. Thank you very much. Ah. Woo. All right, well, last week we, we, we actually, um, on April 22nd, we read Hebrews 8, Hebrews 9, and Hebrews 10, the whole chapters, to get ourselves up for today. Today we start, we're going to 2 Corinthians 5, 21. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse Okay, if you if you there say Amen. Uh, it says, "For he has made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin." Now, when we talk about biblical "new," the word "new," uh, we look at it as knowledge, and when we look at biblical knowledge. We look at it as intimacy. We look at it as one with. Uh, Adam knew his wife and they conceived a child. Amen? Well, it says that who knew no sin. He had no intimate relationship with sin. He didn't know what sin was as far as by experience. 
Everybody in here know sin. All right? We know sin through experience. Now, I, this right here is very important. It says that, let, let, let me start over. For he has made him, he's talking about Jesus. It should be a capital H, why not? For he has made him to be sin for us. In him, he knew no sin. That we might be made the what? Righteousness of God. Now listen to this. He didn't know sin. We knew sin. He transferred, gave us his righteousness, and he became sin. Well, if that's the case, then guess what I can say right now? I don't know sin. Hello? I have no relationship with sin. He knew no sin. What what say? For he knew no sin. Well then I know no sin now because he became sin. And I became the righteousness of God because when he when he stood in his righteousness, he knew no sin. So I'm gonna stand in his righteousness and no sin? Hello? Again, another fact to tell us about sin and our relationship with sin. We don't know sin. We knew sin, but he took sin from us. He became sin. Amen? Uh, is that the only place I'm supposed to go right there? Yeah. He, he was made to be sin. Let's go to 1 Peter, 1 Peter 2.24, one of my healing scriptures. 1 Peter 2.24. Mm. I should have glanced down at the next uh, scripture. I might have wanted to read it. I don't know. I'm just going to ride. Let me get my little car right here. 1 Peter 2.24. This should be one of your healing scriptures. First Peter chapter 2, verse 24 reads, Who his own self, talking about Jesus, bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being, hello, we being what? Dead. Dead. To sin. If I'm dead to something, y'all ever got upset with somebody and say, <laughs> "You dead to me"? <laughs> what? What? What am I saying? You're dead to me. As far as I'm concerned, you dead to me. I know, I know my people. All of them probably said that to somebody at one time. You dead to me. You understand? Well, if sin is dead to me, it's dead to me. We prime the pump for the tabernacle because the first... The first uh, 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 piece of furniture that you encounter in the tabernacle once you come through the gate, which the gate represents Jesus. When we first, I, I come into the inner court, now I'm inside Jesus. I came through the gate and I'm in. The, I, I, came, I found the, the way, the truth and the light. I come through the way. All right? And went into the gate. I entered his gate. Uh, amen? amen. I'm inside in the court and I come to the brazen altar. This brazen altar is an altar where the first thing God dealt with was sin. Now that you're in Christ, let's deal with the sin. 
so that as you make your way back to the holy of holy, sin's been dealt with. Yeah. You're not going to carry sin any further than once you come in. Because once we came into Christ and we can start to understand who he was in our lives, when we start to understand uh, what happened at Calvary, when we start to understand what happened at the cross, when we start to understand what, what uh, 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 propitiation was, when we, when we start to understand that we're bought with a price, when we start to understand that he paid for me, when we start to understand that he became sin for me, that, that, that when we start to understand these things right there, God said, I'm going to deal with this. I want to deal with the sin first. So I need for you to bring an offering so I, I'm going to deal with this sin. It's called the sin offering. A sin offering. Uh, some people need to be dealt with right now because every time they hear offering, they think sinfully. <laughs> now, God asks you for an offering. You got an issue but you go to McDonald's and ask them and for some food. They say, well, give us an offering, and you offer you. No problem. Ain't got no problem. For something that's not even going to last to do you any good uh, 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 and just pass right through you to the drought. Where you can take that same money or, and, and offer it to God and you don't know what God do with it because we'll lift it up to Christ. He'll multiply it. And then, then you get uh, 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 some credit for your account. And then when you get ready to pull out of McDonald's and that tractor trailer going 100 miles an hour, just miss you, you can say, whoa, -hoo 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 -hoo. boy, for my, thank you, God, for my offering. Thank you, Lord, for that protection right there. But see, you don't understand how your how your, uh, your 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 connection your connection makes you makes you qualified so that you can pull something. Uh, there's a word I'm looking for that I'm connected. Wow. He'll bring it to me. He'll bring it to me. But the offering, the sin offering, you had to give God an offering for the sin. Well, he did away with that. God said, what I'm going to do, I'm going to make an offering for you. And the offering is going to be Jesus. And the offering is going to be once and for all. And from this day forward, I don't want to talk about sin. That's what, that's what God's telling us. Because Jesus paid for your sin, the past, the present, and forevermore. If you come to Christ and sin still has a future, then, then I don't know what Christ did for you. So you need to get the revelation. If sin still has a future while you're covered by the blood, something not right. Uh, the death angel couldn't touch the blood. Um, death angel. I'm dead to sin. Connect the dots. All right, so the first piece of furniture that we say is the what? Brazen the brazen altar where what's it dealt with right there? Sin. Then we bring it, we bring an offering. Right? To pay for the sin. And then as far as God is concerned, I'm clean. Now I'm gonna tell you this. If you think that you can drag a bull up a hill and, and give it to God and, and you clean, now, that's something that's almost impossible for us to perceive. 
But it's even more impossible for you to receive that Jesus died for you and you clean. Because the blood of the bulls really couldn't take away sin. It's, it was the grace of God. <laughs> it was the grace of God and his system that took away the sin for you. In his eyes. Because it didn't matter in anybody else's eyes. Because your sister could, could be saying, yeah, I know you gave God that bull, but that stuff I seen you doing last night, eh, that bull ain't enough. <laughs> you need to bring five bulls for all that, what you was doing <laughs> yesterday. Lord have mercy. And then la last week too? <laughs> But God, in his grace and mercy, he told us and gave, gave man what to bring for their sin offering. And in, in God's eyes, God said man was clean. But we can't help man's judgment on man. And it's because of that we judge ourselves. And it's because uh, Jesus said I'm clean, I'm dead to sin, but I know what I did yesterday. I judge myself. Jesus. You don't have. All right, I got to find the scripture. <laughs> I got to find the scripture. Hold on. Uh, don't y'all forget what I'm talking about. Who are you? Hmm? Who, who are you? You're who? A child of God? Really? You just wanted to make noise for just that them few. Um, Romans chapter 14. We ain't do Peter yet, so keep a, keep a, put a marker or something in Peter. We got to come back to Peter. We're going to Romans. I think I'm going to start doing like my daddy. Yeah, I think I, when I come in here, I need to have me a little bowl of grapes or something right here. <laughs> so I can eat, you know what I'm saying? Eat the grapes. Because I, I sit up here and I watch people in here eating. <laughs> I'm not eating nothing. They, they in here just eating like they had. Ba, 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 sa, de, and da, si, et, ba, ba, ba. Remba, kapondri, and da. It's a group, it's a team in here. That they, they position themselves in their chairs so they can eat together. Pass their snacks around. I should just sit here and watch the little network. <laughs> I watch the network. And then they hope I didn't see them knowing I saw them. I hope you ain't see that, but they know I saw it. Boy, I tell you. <laughs> it's God's people. These are God's people. Romans chapter 14. Who are you, first of all? A child of God. If, if, if I say I'm the child of God, uh, what does that mean? If I say I'm the righteous of God, what does that mean? That means I'm in right standing. Okay, so I'm in right standing with God and right to, what does that mean? Because of God's blood, because he died on the cross. Okay, so that makes me a what? A child of God, right? So what do I do? A what? A true servant? So I serve God. So I'm God's servant? Huh? You see how things pop? Now, this is what I just want y'all to see. Romans chapter 14, right? Verse 4 says... Somebody said, wait for me. Wait for me. Yeah, yeah, everybody ready? Okay. Romans chapter 
414, I mean 144 says, Who art thou that judges another man's servant? To his own master he standeth or falleth, yea, he shall be holding up, for God is able to make him stand. Now, in other words, listen, this is what it's saying. Who are you that judge another man's servant? To his own master. It's to his master he, whether he stands or fall. Not, not, not you. Okay? Yea, he shall be holding up. His master can hold him up. For God is able to make him stand. Amen? Right. So you can't even judge yourself if you God's servant. God is able to make you stand. It's only to him that you stand or you fall. You can't judge yourself because you another man's servant. Y'all said it. So who are you to judge yourself? Because I saw what I did. I, 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 I can't take, I can't be the righteous. What is wrong with you? You judging yourself. You don't have the right. Right? <laughs> you don't have the right to judge yourself because you are another man's servant. Hello? I'm the righteousness of God. And you need to start pimping around like that then. I'm the righteousness of God. I ain't say go up in pride now. Don't do that. God resists pride. You don't want to be resisted. I'm the righteousness of God. When the devil comes to condemn you, I'm the righteousness of God. When your own brain tries to talk to you, I'm the righteousness of God. When your soul area, your mind want to condemn you, I am the righteousness of God. You start to say that over and over again, you're going to change. You're going to change. You're going to change. You're going to change. You're not going to be the same person. You're going to change. You're going to understand that God has placed me somewhere and I ain't had nothing to do with it. Now either I can resist what he's done and call him a liar or I can accept it and walk in the truth. Let's get out of there. Let's go back to James. Uh, I just want you to Peter. Let's get out of there. We're going back to 1 Peter 2.24. Huh? Higher, or I can accept it and walk in the truth. My God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. That's pretty, that's pretty good. Let's get out of there. Let's go back to James. Uh, I just want you to Peter. Let's get out of there. We're going back to 1 Peter 2.24. This leads me where to go in here. It used to be this led me where to go. No. Now this tells me where to go in here. Because I got this in here. Amen? So it's first it's first Peter chapter 2, 24. So now when I run into circumstance situations. It's what did the Bible say? What did God say? Amen? So, it's first, it's first Peter, chapter 2, 24. So now, when I run into circumstance situations, it's what So man can come to you with all their little wisdom and all this and that, and all I'm going to tell them is just say the Lord. Because I don't live by my wisdom. I don't live by the world's wisdom. I don't live by what they said. I live by what he said and when he said it to me. If I never read the Bible again in my life, I got enough of it in me to live the rest of my life. That's what you're supposed to be able to say. That I don't care what situation I get in, I know what God said about this situation I'm in. Now, 
God might want to give me a, a, a rhema word on how to deal with the situation. Or I may need a rhema word, and it's not written in the Bible. That's why he said, man, don't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out the mouth of God. So I need to be able to hear what God is telling me because I know what, what your Bible said. I know what the word it lined me up. I'm standing right here, but what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? Amen? Amen? It's a lot of people. You listen to them. They'll tell you what God did. And God said this to me. And God said that to me. And then I look at their life and I'm like, did God say anything to you about living your life for him? Or do he just tell you everything to do and you just keep living in this thing you live in? Because when you got saved, God said better things accompany your salvation. Okay? So what I do, I just listen and say amen. You know why? I can't judge another man's servant. But if God puts you under me, ha! I'm going to deal with you. You know why I'm going to deal with you? Because God going to deal with me. About you. So I'm going to deal with you. What? What? I don't have a choice. I didn't write the rules. I didn't make myself an apostle. I didn't do that. Matter of fact, I didn't know what they did. Because I used to, when I read about them, they was disciples. And I relished to be a disciple because I wanted to do what God, you know, what pleased him. Amen. But then found out that the apostle had some power. 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 You know, most people be like, yeah, I got power. power. Where much is given, that means you got to die. You got to die at a, at a level that a lot of people could never do. You got to die. Wow. You got to die to yourself. Hmm. Apostles, they, they, they thought it was great to suffer like Jesus suffered. I'm like, I'm like, y'all stupid. Oh, yeah, crazy. They were like, yes, yes, I've suffered like Christ. I'm like, I'm like I ain't got that. That was then. I got it now. I understand the power of suffering. I understand the power of suffering right. I understand the power of suffering for him. I understand the power in it. So that power that you got, yeah, you're going to be using it on yourself to suffer. To keep you right here while you're going through. So those of you who desire to have some of the... I listen to my, my grandpa. You better make sure the camera's still right. Listen, Grant, he said it's not a fivefold ministry, but a fourfold ministry. Because he put the pastor teacher as one. Which I believe that to be true anyway. But I'm an apostle teacher. Y'all hear me? I'm not your pastor no more. I'm an apostle teacher. I can pastor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can teach. Mm -hmm. I can evangelize. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can prophesy. Mm -hmm. But I'm an apostle. Call to some serious people, man. Jesus. Mm. Where are we? 
at this at this at this rate we might get <laughs> first peter chapter 2 verse 24 reads who his own self bore or bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness see that's a choice you you should live unto righteousness by whose stripes you were what? Healed. Jesus said, I took whelps on my back so that you could be the righteousness of God, and you're going to tell me that you're not going to accept it? Wow. And think you're just going to get away with it. Mm. Hello? Oh, my God. That's deep. <laughs> Jesus is deep. God is deep. All right, where are we going? Hebrews chapter 10, verse 14. We're just doing a slow walk to get, the, to get our pumps primed so that from once we pass, once we pass this brazen altar, we shouldn't be really hung up on sin anymore in our life. Amen. Amen. Hebrews 10, verse 14. It says, For they that say such things declare, am I in the right place? Great. Probably it didn't sound right. It didn't sound right. For by one? For by one? For by one offering. Y'all know what the offering is, right? A offering is when I present something to you. Amen? What's this? So I have an offer. Do you know this ring represents covenant? Hello? So an offer ring is me offering something to God that puts us in covenant. Amen? I'm offering, but it has to be what he wants. Because we saw in Cain and Abel. And Cain, Abel brought God an offering and he accepted it. And he accepted Abel. But Cain brought God an offering and God despised it and he ain't even like Abel. Now I heard some stuff about, I mean Cain, Cain. I heard some stuff about Cain and Abel. I can't teach yet. Blew my mind. <laughs> Blew my mind. But you can't just bring any of your offering to God and expect him to accept it. And the reason I'm telling you that is we're supposed to, everybody in here know Romans 12, 1 and 2, right? Everybody in here don't know it? Raise your hand if you don't know it. All right, you turn to it. Y'all turn to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. You ready? Romans chapter 12, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of who? Of God, that you do what? That you present yourself. What? Ooh-wee. A living sacrifice. That's an offering. That you present to God. 
yourself as a living sacrifice. Not a dead one to get to get up on the altar and we cut you up and cook you. Because now the day they done. Right? But when you're a living sacrifice, you got to live. <laughs> you got to live. You got to live and be a sacrifice. You got to live a sacrificial life. A living sacrifice. That's what? Holy. That means I'm doing it God's way. Something that can be presented to God and God like it. Holy and what? Because it, it, it explained it right here. And acceptable. For what? Unto God. Not unto me. Not unto you. Unto God. Because what? Because that's the least you can do. Use a zero. You just said level zero when you can do that. Oh, salvation is a free gift from God. Yeah, it is, but it's going to cost you your life. It's going to cost you everything you got. You don't want to go to hell? You don't want to feel the wrath of God? Then you're going to have to pay with your life. See, we ain't know that. We felt well. Yeah, I don't, I don't have to go to hell. I, I, I ain't got to run through the fire with my gasoline draws. So I'm not gonna burn up. I don't have to. I don't have to go in there. But but Jesus Jesus got me. No. You don't have to run through the fire. God said I gave you the fire insurance. Okay, so you don't have to worry about burning up. But your life has to be one that I'm pleased with. Amen. You can't just have. Well, look, God said I bought you with a price. You got to live my way. You can't, you can't be bought with a price and continue in what you're doing. Now I took away sin. I took away the penalty of sin. I took away all of that. Now, what you going to do? I need for you to study this so you can learn how to live now, live properly. Hello? That's your reasonable service. Huh? That's the least you could do to God. A lot of people think they fake and God is going to take it. Some people live, live a, I'm a living church sacrifice. The only one I'm in church. As soon as I get out of church, oh, hell, hey, yeah. And God's standing right there like this. Uh, what's next scripture say? Be not. Uh, uh, it says, be not conformed to this world. It says, don't be like everybody else in the world. You don't get to be like everybody else in the world. You had your, how old are you? You had your 12 years of going crazy. Now I'm going to take your next 12 years and I'm going to elevate you boy into something you never thought you'd be. I'm going to help you change your life to by the time you 24, Lord, have mercy. All people see is me. You're just preaching and you teaching and you laying hands on people and you prophesying. And boy, you got so much money in the bank because the people see the gift on you. They want to sow into you. Lord, have mercy. You have so much you can just give to people. God said, watch what I do with you. Huh? You don't have to, uh, I'm going to college, I'm going to try to do this. No, 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 no. Give yourself to me. I'm your college. I will teach you and take you further in the next 12 years if you would just don't be like them. Be ye not conformed. It says, be not conformed to, 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 to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. You got 12 years of falsehoods. You got 12 years of bull sugar. <laughs> you got 12 years of that. Now I'm going to help you renew that. 
Renew your mind. Amen. You're going to take on the mind of Christ. Amen. And the young guy get you the better. Yeah. The younger I get you, the better. Amen. Because the older you get in that world, Lord have mercy. You know how hard it is for you to change? Yeah. So the younger I get you, the better. So the devil sped it up to where now children, uh, how old is that boy? Ten years old, no stuff that we didn't even learn until we was 20. The devil said, I got to speed up uh, corrupting them. I got to speed it up. Time is running out. I need to corrupt them as quickly as I can. And I need the world to be in cahoots with me. That's the devil. That's the devil's system. But see, we don't want to uh, really look at that. I'm going to tell you this. We take our children and we send them to public school so the devil can teach them what to do and how to live. That's why we need more schools that, that are Christian-based that's not connected to the government. So you can tell them the truth. So they can uh, uh, raise the dead. So they can cleanse the leper. So they can heal the sick. So they can cast out demons. And they and, and can't spell supercalifragilistic expialidosis. Because that don't do nothing for you. Where presidents and, and people of big corporations be coming to them and say, how do I do this? Wow. And you, 24 years old, never study what they study, but can look at their life and God give you all the insight. And you bam, bam, bam with the wisdom. And they just like, my God. Jesus. How much can I pay you for this? And you're like, I don't want your money. I don't want your money. Donate it to my ministry. Y'all just don't understand. Prophecy, kingdom living, is sweeter than money. You can't serve two masters. See, the devil has put us in so much oppression that we can't wake up without thinking about how I'm paying my bills. I was in there before I came in here. Oh, here look at that. Uh -huh. God. <laughs> how am I deal with this? Jesus. I wish I had me when I was 12 years old. Just somebody with my heart, especially for a child. Mm -mm -mm. My spiritual father had to drop out of school because he's seeing too many angels and stuff flying around the classroom. They think he's gone crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Just think of that. Your child getting in trouble, you, you going back and forth to school, because you're acting like the devil, but no, you find out that it's because God's messing with him. And this system just not what it's cranked up to be. Did we finish the scripture? Don't we go to Hebrews 10, 14 now? Did we go there yet? Am, are we there now? Did I read it? For, wait a minute. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 14. That's why I was at the wrong place, right? I said by the, for by one offering, he has perfected forever. forever. Oh, no, I ain't read it yet. <laughs> I, that that what it did, what it just did to me. <laughs> For by one offering, one offering, y'all, he has perfected forever, Hallelujah. forever, 
them that are sanctified. Not till you do something wrong and I had to go back and say, God, forgive me. Yeah. yeah. You know what they teach? You, you, you got to get back in right standing with God. Hey, the blood put me in right standing with God. And when I mess up, I'm still in right standing with God because I'm under the blood. And all I do is say, Lord, forgive me for my trespassing and keep it moving. I recognize I messed up more than you. I don't need you telling me about my mess ups. For by one offering, he has perfected forever them that are sanctified. Are you sanctified? Yes. He's talking about you. Mm. What does I say? Wherefore, the Holy Ghost also is a witness, <laughs> a witness to us. For after that, he had said before, this is a covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. Jesus, man, it's a covenant, man. Y'all hear this? Huh? That I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds will I write them. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Y'all yeah, need to get his laws in, in your heart and in your mind. So that if you never see a Bible again, you 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 all right. What's the name of that movie? I Am Legend. Was that it? Who's the one he had the Bible on the inside? And he walked the book the book of Eli. You know what I'm saying? The boy had the Bible out all, all in the inside. Let me tell you something though. A lot of people got the the, the book on the inside and don't know the revelation of it. Hmm? Mm -hmm. If I had all that word in, 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 in me that that boy had, Lord have mercy. I know I'd be cooking with some because I, I get revelation. If I don't get nothing else, I get <laughs> revelation. Huh? I can't live without revelation. I value revelation. I demand revelation. I call on revelation. Jesus said, with, on Revelation, I will build my church. And then, hey, 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 we go, the gates. The gates. Y'all better understand these gates. The gates of hell will not, will not prevail. So you better be in God's church. Prophet Dan want me to read verse 17. She geeking on 17. It says, And their sins and iniquities will I remember tomorrow. No more. Hello? No more. No more. Amen. Amen. Where are we going? Hallelujah. Leviticus? The book of the law. One, three through nine. I thought you were sleepy. Uh, let me tell you what it is. It's the anointing. You you better ask God to let it let it remain on you. Let me tell y'all. See y'all understand this. Everybody in here anointed on the inside. But there's one that comes on you on the outside. That's why people be talking about the presence of God is here. God everywhere. But that ain't what they're talking about. That's when that thing come up on the up, up, up on you on the outside. And it empowers you to do something. Mm. Mm. Dandariamba Baba Sipopoto Riondo Sipoko Lenban Darianda Boso. When that thing come up on you. Let's think about that. I'm running around with anointing and then the thing crawl up on me. <laughs> go and say, you go over there and tell them let my people go. <laughs> Woo. 
Grandma. Let me do it this way so I can stop. I'm struggling to look up there. I could do it this way. I'm going to Leviticus chapter 1. 1-1? One, 1-3. One? One, three. If his offering be a burnt sacrifice of the herd. Everybody understand? We all together? Let him offer a male without blemish. Y'all see that, right? Y'all think there's no difference in male and female? God makes a, a big deal about the difference in male and female. For people, see, that's why you try to confuse the children now. With this male and female. You could choose what you are. Can I tell the truth? Can I tell the truth? Yeah. Uh, it might ban me on. Mm. What, what me, you want to know how to tell what you are? <laughs> you want to know how to tell what you are? Huh? You ain't got no choice. I'll tell you that now. You want to know how to tell what you are? Huh? Don't say it. Look between your legs. <laughs> That'll tell you what you are. I said it. It's out there. You know why? Because it's been out there. I learned that when I was a kid. I wanted to know what the difference was. I had a little sister. I seen I was like, what in the world is wrong with you? <laughs> Mom! <laughs> My mama explained it to me. Hello? Wasn't no choice. It wasn't no choice. That's that. That's that. That's for boys. That's for girls. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, Baba. I probably spoke in tongues then. Like, Jesus, that blew my mind. So the devil has come to poison our children to make them think they have a choice in what they are. You don't have a choice. Just understand the devil did that to you. Understand that when you get confused, it's not because you chose to be confused. But once you hear the truth, now you got to say, God, I need you to really help me with this one. Because I thought, because for years they've been teaching confusion. And now they're teaching our children in the public school the confusion. And then they got confused people teaching them. And they call the confused people and say, can you please put on your costume and come on in here and confuse my children for me? <laughs> and they like, hey, um, are you a man or woman? It doesn't matter. I'm a <clears throat> it. Yeah. You better have the right pronouns. Yeah. Let me tell you the correct pronouns. For me, I'm a man. I'm a male. All my pronouns are him, he. Anything else? Yeah, yeah his. Uh. Them my pronouns. You don't get to choose your pronouns. You don't get to choose what's down there. And so many little children now to be mutilating themselves. It's just the devil just sit back laughing. And he's so happy. And this is such a terrible thing that's happening to our children. It's like the days of Moloch when they was taking the children and taking them and burning them to, for sacrifice. Because people don't care nothing about their children. And so they offer their children up to, to these gods. And yeah, I'm going to tell you this now. Them gods are real. Them spirits are real. That's why God calls himself the Lord of Lords. The King of Kings. Because there are, there are other lords that lord over people. Because people uh, allow them to. And people have their parents or grand, great grandparents or somebody have surrendered themselves to this false god. And so then this false god, you've given them the right to come and interfere in your life. 
And some of us, our families have been messed up. And so this curse passes down to us and then we don't know what to do. And then we get confused. And so this is what the devil did. The devil made it so when you hear the truth, you think it's a lie. Huh? I know a boy so caught up in, with, in lust because his daddy was like that. That he's so caught up in lust that he's like, well, David had a thousand women. <laughs> it ain't normal for us just to have one wife. Well, then why God said? it? Why you telling me I don't need to have one wife? If it was impossible, he wouldn't have told me to do it. See, all he said was, be disciplined. That's all he said. Be disciplined. So this whole sexual confusion thing is just exactly that. It's to confuse you sexually. I remember I had, I had some boys tell me I was scared. What are they tell me? Homophobic. I said, step to my face then. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. I mean, this is back in, you know. Let's see. Because homophobic means what? That got fear of homo? <laughs> I'm trying to think of the last thing I feared. I didn't have fear. I never was one of them children with fear. That's why I got in trouble a lot. I, didn't, I wasn't scared of that. I think the last thing I feared was my daddy. I fear God now. But I think the last one was my father. So, to call me homophobic... Nah. And then I think they I think they meant it another way, like I was scared to be one. Well, you might have a point. <laughs> I, I ain't scared to be one, I'm not one. It's like they want you to at least consider it. Okay, I consider it. No. Right, there you go. I consider it and yeah, I got the answer. Anyway. Where are we? If his offering be a burnt sacrifice of the herd, let him offer a male without blemish. That's what we got called, a male. He shall offer it of his own voluntary, his will, at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord. And he shall put his hand upon the head of the burnt offering, and it shall be accepted for him to make atonement for him. Now, you got sin? You bring, the, you bring the sacrifice, you take your hand, and you press your hand into the head. What, what does that do? That, uh, um, say what? It's me transferring my sin to gesture of me transferring the sin that I have on me into that animal. Because that animal is taking my place. I'm supposed to be the one dying. But I press my hands into the, into the head of the animal, transfer the sin to the animal, then we kill the animal. So now I paid for my sin. Amen? Amen? So I was supposed to be the one to die in. So the sacrificial uh, atonement is what Jesus did. Jesus was the innocent one who became guilty for me. So God killed him on the cross. Just like Jesus said, can nobody kill me? I lay my life down. God, he did that for God. He didn't do that for the devil. He did that for God. All right? He paid the price for God. So, amen? And he was a male without blemish. Amen? Uh, 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 verse 5. And he shall kill the bullock. Anybody have a name? He shall kill the <laughs> He shall kill the bullock. He shall kill the bullock. He shall kill the bullock before the Lord. And the priest. <laughs> yeah, we so got some people down here. Like that. That's their name. He shall kill the bullock. <laughs> mm. 
<laughs> he shall kill the bullock before the Lord and the priest Aaron's sons shall bring the blood and sprinkle the blood around about upon the altar that is by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Okay, what's that say? What's that next one say? He gonna fillet that thing? And he shall fillet the burnt offering and cut it into his, into his pieces. And the sons of Aaron the priest shall put fire upon the altar and lay the wood in order upon the fire. They even had to put the wood in order. So we see Jesus Jesus was that one sacrifice. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. That even the, the bullock, the bullock got saved. <laughs> the bullock didn't even have to get killed. Jesus. Yeah. Jesus became. Yeah. Why are you talking? Are you a bullock? <laughs> <laughs> well see, why is she talking? Are there any bullocks in here? Or who? Where's the bullock? There's no bullocks in here. Yeah. Y'all gotta forgive us. The people down here just they ain't right. They, ain't right. they gone, they just gone now. All right, where are we going? I'm supposed to go to verse 9. Let me keep going. <coughs> Ain't no bullocks down here. All oh, the bullocks gone. All right. Verse 8. And the priest, Aaron's sons, shall lay the parts, the head, and the fat in order upon the wood that is on the fire which is upon the altar verse 9 mm -hmm. but his inward this is the chitlins but his inward inwards and his legs shall he wash with water and the priest shall burn all on the altar to be a burnt sacrifice an offering made by fire a sweet savor unto the Lord see God said look you burn all them things but when you get to them chitlins you can wash them things wash them chitlins and wash them feet. Because people, and that, that was with the, with the bullock and cows, because people like the pig feet and the chitlin. They like that thing. God said, no, even when the cow, I need for you to wash that before you burn it. Wash it before you burn it, because the guy like that ain't no savory smell to me. I need for you to clean that and clean them feet off, because them feet been walking around on the ground, stepping on all kinds of, mm -hmm, right? Clean the feet and clean the chitlin before you burn it. The end with the entrails. Y'all know what I mean when I say entrails, right? Yes. Some, some educated people out there know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the, the, uh, the uh, organs and things like that. Liver, kidneys, all that stuff. Amen? All right. Where I'm going now? Come on, we're going to get through this now. We're getting out of here. Where, where am I going now? So I'm supposed to go to four. Why well, have this on here twice? Why do I have this on here twice? He should lay his hands on the head. Oh, because I wanted to emphasize the laying on of the ha hands on the head to transfer the sins. So now we're going to, uh, you said four? <clears throat> Chapter four, verse what? And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, speaking to the children of Israel, saying, if a soul shall sin through ignorance against any of the commandments of the Lord concerning things which ought not to be done and shall do against any of them, if the priest that is anointed 
do sin according to the sin of the people, then let him bring for his sin, which he has sinned, a young bullock <laughs> without blemish unto the Lord for a sin offering. And he shall bring the bullock into the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord and shall lay his hand upon the what? Bullock's head and kill the bullock before the Lord. Jesus. Where am I supposed to go? What's next? Go, go to verse 5. And the priest that is anointed shall take of the bullock's blood and bring it to the tabernacle of the congregation. Is that it? Nowhere. All right, Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10, what? 10 what? 10 what? Hebrews chapter 10, verse 4. Now, look, for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sin. Y'all see that? Hello? Hebrews chapter 10, verse 3 says, But in those sacrifices there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. They had to do it every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and the goats should take away sin. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he says, Sacrifices and offerings thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. And burnt offerings and sacrifices for sins thou hast had no pleasure. God said, I, I took no pleasure in those things, even though he set that system up for us. All right? Above... And then said, I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. And Jesus said, I came down here to, to deal with this. I'm going to do the will of the Lord. What's written on the scriptures, what's written in the book. Above, when he says, sacrifice and offerings and burnt offerings and offerings for sin, thou wouldest not neither had pleasure therein which are offered by the law. Even though he made the law, God had no pleasure in those things, why do y'all think God didn't have any pleasure in those things? I'll tell you why. There was no uh, redemption in it. There was no changing of you in it. There was nothing in it to help you. It was just the ritual that you went through to keep you at zero. There was no plus to it. God doesn't do anything without increase. So there was no pleasure in it for you to keep doing the same thing over and over again and have to bring another animal and kill an animal because you did this again. There would be no pleasure to God and you keep coming to him saying, forgive me my sin, forgive me my sin, forgive me my sin. I used to teach that. Just keep doing it because one day you won't do it no more. Because that's what I was taught. Now I understand that it's because of my consciousness towards God that will help me change. Because even if I go to commit the wrong act, my consciousness towards God is not going to let me really, you know, I can't embrace it like I used to. Y'all understand what I'm saying? It's just not as, as pleasurable as it used to be. Where I'm going, uh, Mrs. Brill? Genesis, Genesis chapter 2. What's my thought? Um, Do I have one, huh? The the okay, now we're going to see, see why. Yes, the blood, the blood was the important thing. Genesis chapter 2? Huh? I don't know. Let me get, look at my paper. Y'all confusing. Y'all don't. Y'all don't. Y'all y'all take too long. Genesis two seventeen and Romans six twenty three. Did we do Hebrews ten four? Now this is what I want to say about Hebrews ten four. That's what the thought was can't that it cannot take away. It couldn't take away the sin. 
They couldn't do it even though God set it up like that. There was never a change. And then if you see on the paper, I put credit card. It was like a credit card. You know how you take your credit card and you go buy something? You ain't paid nothing. <laughs> you just gave them the little plastic thing. You ain't paid nothing. They ain't paying nothing. They took the place of money. If you gave them money, you'd have made the payment. That's just credit card thing. Hey, yeah, I'm coming up here, you know, I'm paying this, making this payment over and over again. It's for the same thing over and over again. Only God don't charge usury. God don't charge interest. You understand? So Jesus came and he was the money, the blood. Where are we getting ready to go now? The currency was the blood. Come on, there we go. What's the scripture? Genesis 2.17. Anybody there yet? Read it. Hmm? Is that what I say? I don't think that's right. Let me go to Romans six twenty-three. It could be a, a, a misprint. What's Romans six twenty-three? Anybody there? Let me get. What's it say? Huh? The payment for sin. So that's why Jesus died. The wages of sin is death. All right? We sin, something die. Unless you did the sin. Ha! Amen? All right. And the next one? Now, this is where the life's in the blood. Leviticus 17, 11. Right? Now we see the currency, not the credit card. The actual spending of the currency. But it has to be the right type of currency. 17 verse 11 reads, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls, for it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. Amen? Amen. Huh? Amen. Now, the life of the flesh is in the blood, not the life of the soul. Amen? The flesh. The flesh. If y'all ever go to Galatians chapter 5 and read what the works of the flesh is, mm, boy. But the soul, God said he took this for what? What does it say about my soul? In verse 17? I mean, Leviticus 17, verse 11? Verse 11? For the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for what? For my soul, even though the life of the blood, I mean, the flesh is the blood. But God said, I made it so that you can redeem your soul, your souls. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. I allowed for you to change, exchange to me a, 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 a flesh payment for soul. Because God didn't come to redeem your flesh. God came to redeem my soul. Go ahead. Huh? To redeem my soul. What's my soul? My will, my intellect, my emotions, right? My will, my mind, my emotions. What I will to do, why I'm doing what I'm doing, and the way I feel about it. All of that. God said, I allow when, when Jesus, when Jesus uh, paid the price with the blood, 
I allowed you to have redemption of your soul, not the flesh. Yeah, understand that. God never came to save my flesh. Well, I'm somebody go to Galatians five and yeah, and, and 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 read where it's gonna be somewhere around. That's like the fruit of the spirit right there. Five twenty two twenty three. That's the fruit of the spirit. It's gonna be I think before that. It's nineteen. What's it say? Now the works of the flesh is this. They manifested. The very first one, adultery. This is a work of a flesh. Come on. Fornication. What are these sexual sins? The devil, I mean, right on the top, man. The works of the flesh. The devil, the devil said, I'm gonna work your flesh. Okay? Adultery, fornication, what? Uncleanliness. Those people get getting them diseases and all this stuff. Go ahead. Lasciviousness, <laughs> super lust, where men mess with children. Yeah, all of that nastiness. Come on. A idolatry when you 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 what you what you uh, 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 desire is higher than what God desires. What's next? Witchcraft, Lord have mercy. Huh? Idolatry, witchcraft, again, together. There they are. Where it's like you're under spell. You don't know what you're doing. And not only that, now you're affecting your other generations. Come on. Hatred. And I would tell you that now you see it's two witchcrafts. I want you to see what y'all just read. There's witchcraft that we can deal with by casting out demons, casting out spirits. Then there's one that's a work of the flesh. You can't cast that out. You ever try casting out lust? You ever try casting out idolatry? You ever try casting out fornication? You can't cast them things out. That's not a work of the flesh. Them things got to be dealt with. Now, those are works of the flesh that we have to deal with spiritually. But if a, a, witch, a witch put some type of spell or something on you, you can cancel that. But the work of the flesh, the only way you're going to deal with that is the renewing of your mind. And that's in the soul area. Come on. What else? Variance, yeah. I just, I, I just do anything. Oh, okay. I, I, I tell you one thing. I'm doing something else. Come on. Emulation, emulation. Uh, uh, emu people who cut themselves up, scar themselves all up. Yeah, yeah. Y'all heard these these, these uh, uh, medical terms and these people. They just cut. It. He's a cutter. Mm -hmm. What do you mean a cutter? I cut too. I cut meat. I cut this. What do you mean? No, no. They abuse themselves. They cut themselves. Huh? That's, that's, that's the work of the flesh. And see, spirits will lead you to do these things. Come on. Wrath. That's right. Somebody who just mad all the time. Coming in their mouth just flapping blah, 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 blah. I told somebody about that today. So have you tried to gain control over that tongue? Because you know, can't no man do that. It takes the spirit of God. What you working on? What you working on? Let no corrupt communication proceed. Huh? That, that's what we know to the mind. Come on, what's next? Okay. Strife. Strife. Mm -hmm. Mad at everybody. Just want to start fights for no reason. Right. Want to stir stuff up, keep people at, against each other. Right. Don't they understand it? And a lot of times that wrath will lead to strife. That's why God say a soft answer. Give a person a soft answer, man. You understand? That's strife. Make me, I just want to bust you in your face. 
You understand? It's like wrath and strife. They they cousins. They walk hand in hand. What's next? Seditions. I forgot about that one. What is that? Davasatarayanda. Somebody looked that up. I forgot. Go ahead. Come on. Okay. And there's heresies. Heres heresies? Heresies. Is that what you say? Yeah, you correct. H-E-R-E-S-I-S. Heresies. You heard Man-made laws. Huh? Man-made laws. Not God made laws, man made laws and try to put God's name on it. Like some, a, a, a bozo. I can't say, oh, Jesus, help me that. <laughs> uh, a male who is not submitted to God who want to tell everybody what to do. You know why? Because the Bible says you're supposed to submit to me. Yeah, well, that's heresies. Because the Bible says I'm supposed to submit to you as you submit to Christ. Mm -hmm. Don't leave that part off. Right, right. You ain't submitting to Christ, but you want me to submit to you? Right. Ain't happening. Come on, what's next? Uh, enviousness. Enviousness? Envious. Yeah, people who, uh, I want what you got. I get mad at you and jealous just because you got it. Okay. I'm envious of you. I can't live my life for looking at yours. Come on. Murders. Murders? Mm -hmm. Well, y'all understand what that is. And it ain't just talking about when you take a, a, a weapon and kill somebody. That's right. You can murder people with your mouth. Drunkenness. Under the influence of anything. That's what these are works of the flesh. Mm -hmm. That used to be one of mine right there. That drunkenness and addicted to crap. Just need I always need some outside substance to make me feel better. You know what I'm saying? Made me feel better getting high. Not understanding that every time I took them them drugs, I was uh, entering into the into the spirit realm illegally. Yeah. <coughs> getting high. Thinking I it, it's cooling me out. No, it's not. No, it's putting you in more bondage. Because after a while, getting high on whatever you get high on ain't going to be enough. I'm going to need more because it, there's no satisfaction in the flesh. And all of these are works of the flesh. What else? Um, um, derivers, derivers, derivers. Argumentative. Argumentative. Yeah. Argumentative. Just all the time. Yes. It's a person that, even if you show them they wrong, they right. <laughs> I can prove to you you wrong, but they right. They're going to keep on arguing. Because they like arguing. They get off on arguing. It's not, they don't even care what we're arguing about. Matter of fact, we started arguing because the little boy had on the red shirt. And now we arguing because you the way you stopped at the stop sign. We done gone through everything. Just keep on arguing. Because there's no satisfaction to nothing that you say. Because as soon as you say something, I'm going to think of something else. Come on. And such like, or which I tell you before, as I have also told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. God said, don't you be uh, 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 deceived. He said, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. See, because the kingdom of God don't have no foolishness in it. A man who can't be a man can't walk in the kingdom of God. A woman who can't be a woman cannot walk in the kingdom of God. It's very important that we are who we are. I am who God made me because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And I'm the only one of one. So I can't try to make this something else. God said, don't, don't be deceived now. There's only one Kia on this earth right there. With all the, 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 the circumstance, all the uh, 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 attributes, 
everything that she has, God designed. He took his time. Lord have mercy. And he designed it and shaped it and molded it just like he wanted for a specific purpose. The devil's job is to confuse us that I don't even know who I am. This is the work of the flesh. I don't know why y'all keep saying y'all want to get out of here, but then y'all keep letting all this stuff happen and I got to explain it all. That's all right. Where are we at? What's the distance? Give me, give me the, give me the, 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 the definition. I'm, then I'm gonna tell you what it is. Conduct or speech. Um, what is the sentence? What inviting people to rebel against the authority um, of a state or monarch? All right. So it's when I, I, I'm staying in ministry, and people split the ministry. And, and, and get people on your side against the pastor, against the leader, against the teacher. And you, 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 see, you see a weakness that he has or something, and it's real. And then you get people, y'all getting cornered and start whispering and talking about it. And you split the ministry right down the middle so we can't move forward. Seditions. Amen. Because the only way this ministry can move forward is we all don't want to court. Amen. Amen. That's right. That's right. So when you got a little fashion or, or, or whatever they want to call it, a little group of people over here, I don't, let me see. They getting out of here. I'm going to tell you that now. You're coming here, try to build up your own little kingdom. I'm burning that joint down. I'm going to burn it down. Yeah, it may take some time, and I'm going to work my way around it, and I'm going to wait till the day, and God say, burn it! I'm going to burn it down. Fire! Fire on you! Fire! I'm going to burn it down. Ain't nobody coming here going to split it. It ain't happening. Ha! No seditions. I don't care how slick you are. I'm, I'm going to see you. You know why I'm going to see you? Because God's going to let me see you. He's going to show me you. And then the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to talk to her. And then she's going to come back and she's going to say, yeah, I see it. Because the foundation of the church is the prophet and the apostle. And once I get that right there, and this is together, I, yeah, I'm, I just sit back, man. I'm like, yeah. the gates of hell shall not prevail. <laughs> you understand? It all goes together. All right, where are we? Come on, we almost through this thing. Four, four? Yeah, we just talked about that one. All right, we'll do that next week. Exodus 38, 8. This, this, right, it's starting on the brass lava. So today we're finished with priming our pump. We finished with the brazen altar. We're not going to talk about the sin no more. Even though I didn't get to tell y'all about Azazel. Did I tell y'all about Azazel? That's right. Today I got to go study your own self and call Elder Marquise. But Azazel is, very, is important too. Azazel is, 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 is Jesus became all this. It's the reason they call things scapegoat. A scapegoat. Do you want to you talk to her? Talk to the elder. I'm moving on. How you spell Azazel? I'll have this for you. I'll have this for you. Hold on. Hold your question. Okay. Hold on. Anything else? Can I close it now? Father, we thank you for the word. And we thank you for whoever was watching. I'm going to tell you this. If you don't know Jesus, you need to get a relationship with the Lord. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. I'm going to just go verse 9. It says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart 
that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I pray that whoever's watching this, that they would confess with their mouth, Father God, that Jesus is Lord. And they believe in their heart that he lives today. That means that you, God, raised him from the dead so that they shall be saved. Everyone who accepts that, Father God, we say thank you for another one for the kingdom of God. Amen. We give you our honor and praise, Father God, for their lives and for ours. Join us here again next week. This is Apostle Benny, Disciples of Yeshua Deliverance Ministry, signing off. We love y'all. Peace. Let's get a little praise fire. Burning Fire with Apostle Benny Walls. To give, find us on Giblify and the Sunrise Ministry International Church. Download the app on any smart device. Create an account easy as tap, give, done. Disciples of Yeshua Deliverance Ministry. Follow us and like us on Facebook. Send us an email. We would love to hear from you.